Wednesday night we were here, and uh, we'll pick up here again. James chapter number 4, verse number 6. He gives more grace. Do you know there's more grace available than what you're walking in right now? <clears throat> more grace. We all have the grace of salvation. We all have the grace of all the, all the blessings of God. But here's something that there's more of. There's more grace available than what we got at salvation. <clears throat> in other words, he gives more grace. Wherefore, he says, God resists the proud. Isn't that right? Gives grace unto the humble. So who gets this more grace? The humble. Humility is a doorway into this more. And humility enables us to hear what we need to hear and see what we need to see. We're going to see that this morning. But that's the reason we can get into more grace because the, the, uh, the humility provides an avenue for us to get into it. So he gives more grace. He said, God resists the proud, gives grace to the humble. Now notice verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He shall lift you up. So we see humility in verse, both verse 6 and 10. And he said, humility is the key to more grace. And then he said, humble yourself, and He'll lift you up. So it's grace that lifts us up. Amen. And can you see what we're talking about? It's grace that lifts us up. So, uh, in this context of this grace that lifts us up, uh, let's look at that just briefly before we go any further. Look at some verses. Job chapter number 22. Job chapter number 22. Can we look at a few of these verses? Job 22. Look at verse number. We, we're so familiar with verse, uh, I'm sorry, verse, uh, we're, oh yeah, all that Psalms. That's why it's not looking right. Job 22, verse 29. We're verse, familiar with verse 28. Let's read verse 28. Thou shalt decree a thing, and it will be established unto thee. The light will shine unto thy way. Verse 29. When men are cast down, then thou shalt say, There is a lifting up, and he shall save the humble person. That word save could mean a lot of different things. Save from some sort of destruction. Save from the hand of the enemy trying to work his way in our lives. There is a when, when people are down, we can say to them, there is a lifting up. There is a lifting up. Say, there is a lifting up. And uh, who does it come to? The humble. Those are the ones that get this, this uh, lifting up. Can we see that's saying the same thing? Now go to the book of Proverbs, the 18th chapter. Proverbs 18, verse 12. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty. And before honor is humility. Notice that's saying the same thing. I'm just showing you this is all through the Bible here. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty. In other words, that's another word for pride. Before destruction, you know, we read that verse, pride goes before destruction. Before destruction, this verse just says it a little different. The heart of man is haughty. But notice, before honor, before honor is humility. In God's kingdom, the way up is down. Humility does not mean, we were here, Wednesday night we were talking about this. It doesn't mean to beat low. It doesn't mean to... Uh, it doesn't mean to condemn yourself. It means to lay low. Now, somebody said, what does that mean, lay low? Well, it basically means just staying close to the, as close to the truth as you can get. The, <clears throat> excuse me. The closer to truth you are, the humbler you are. The more, because pride inflates the truth. I'm just diving into this because we, we kind of dilly dallied a little on Wednesday night. It's time to dive on in. Pride inflates the truth. Pride is believing a lie. Something about ourselves that's not true. It's believing something about ourselves that's not true. You know what I'm talking about? If I believe I'm the greatest preacher in the world, that'd be pride. Amen. So pride is believing a lie. Humility is staying as close to the truth as you can stay. What makes people exaggerate? 
Well, they look better if, they, if, we, if we tell it a little bit. If we just, you know, uh, 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 there's a word I'm looking for, elabor- or elaborate or, or uh, embellish. That's the word. If we embellish the truth just a little bit, we'll look better. But what's, what's that rooted in? It's, well, yeah, it's a lie, but it's rooted in pride. <laughs> it's rooted in pride. Why do we want to look better? Amen. There are times whenever the truth is ugly, but it's us. And humility can look at that and say, ah, I, I don't like what I see. It's ugly, but it's the truth. And I'm not going to lie against the truth and act like it's not true. If it's true, even if it's ugly, it's still true. When somebody points out our attitude on something, and we go, well, bless God, you know. That's pride. If it's ugly, and it's us, we ought to just be able to fess up to it and say, Oh, I, I got some things I got to make some adjustments on. And that is where, because grace, that, that's humility. And that's down low to the truth. And that, see, and, and let me see, finish my statement. And grace goes to low places. What is His grace? Remember we were saying on Wednesday night, Hebrews 4.16, uh, come boldly to the throne of grace, we might obtain mercy and find grace to help. Grace to what? Help. help. Grace is God's help in the time of need. When we get in a place of need, we need some help. And if you don't believe that, that's pride. That, that's pride that believes that lie. Because you think you can do it all on your own. The Bible says the fool says there is no God. And fools also act like they don't need Him. You know what I'm talking about? It's foolish. Pride is foolishness. And uh, humility is, is uh, just staying close to the truth. The truth is I need help. I need God. I need, I need His power to intervene here. I'm not that smart. I might have even messed this up on, uh, you know, because of just being dumb, you know. And, and I need help. I need mercy to say, well, bless God, I'm just going to fix this on my own. Well, that, that's just pride. You need you, you and I need regular help. Regular help. And the humbler you are, the more you recognize that. The humbler you are, the, the more humility you're walking in, the more you realize, I, I, I cannot make a success out of life. I cannot, uh, I cannot fulfill God's plan on my own. I just need His help. And the more you depend on His help, the more humble you are. The more you trust yourself, the more pride you're in. We got a culture full of proud people. They hear what God is, what, uh, they hear what's available to them. They hear what God has said. They hear what they need, but they don't, they get mad at what they hear. Ah, it's just a crutch, you know. Nah, nah, nah. Pride. It's a big, it's a big issue. It's a big problem. So notice here in Proverbs 18, verse 12, did you find it? Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty, and before honor is humility. Now, honor, if you uh, look at the Bible closely, it it means, well, it's a bigger subject we can get into right now, but honor means to be exalted, to be lifted up. It means basically to be valued or esteemed or, or looked up to kind of thing. And God says He wants to honor us. He does. He said, remember Psalm 91, he said, you know, the whole psalm, he that dwells in the secret place and so forth. But then the last verse, I believe it is, uh, because he set his love on me, amen. Can anybody help me with that? Because he set his love on me, therefore I will honor him, honor him, satisfy him with long life and everything. But notice he said, I will, God is speaking. He said, I will honor him. And the Bible says, they that honor me, I will honor. If you, if you recognize what the honor of God will do in your life, you'll, you'll almost cuss every other kind of honor. You don't want anything to do. You don't want the honor of men. You don't want the honor of, of the world. I mean, you know, people live for fame, 
recognition, fortune in the world. If you knew anything about the honor of God, you'd cuss that. I'm not preaching cussing, but you know what I'm talking about. In your heart, you would go, that is a damnable thing, and I don't want it in my life. Because the honor, what, what, what men lift people up in, they can also knock them out. Take their legs out from under them. What God exalts a man into, no man can take him out. Amen. That's why you need to want the kind of prosperity that God gives and not the world's kind. Because when God gives it, no man, they might get mad at you, but they can't take it away from you. They can't take it away from you. But here is honor. He said, verse 12, before honor is humility. How many of you know we ought not look at the uh, honor in this verse? We ought to look at what comes before it. Because if we'll get that right, God will do the honor part. He'll take care of the rest of this. Go to the 29th chapter of Proverbs here. The 30, or excuse me, the uh, 23rd verse. Proverbs 29 and 23. A man's pride shall bring him low, and honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. So just saying the same thing. Can you see that? I wanted you to see that what he said in James, that grace lifts us up. Pride, if that's true, pride brings us low. Now, there's, I guess what I was getting in my spirit whenever I was preparing this, and the Lord was talking to me as well as all of us, that we, most of the time, I think sometimes we probably recognize that we've, we've got some pride issues to deal with, but most of the time there can be pride in our lives and we don't see it. Uh, and so... The Lord has to help us understand what pride is. It's not being in a high place, because God can put you in a high place. Uh, it is, pride is, is uh, well, there's so much to this. Um, pride is being inflated beyond what's reality. Now, sometimes, now this is only one side of it. Sometimes it's pride that makes people buy things they can't afford. Because they want to appear something that they're not. I had a man come to me one, one time in the church, and uh, he was in the process of the conversation. He said something about he got a new car. I said, oh, great, what is it? And, and he sort of put his head down, you know, he felt bad. He said, oh, it's nothing special. But he was describing it, and it was an older model, and, a lot of miles and some dings and things, you know, things that weren't quite up to what a newer car would have. And, but he said, you know, it's paid for. I started shouting. I said, praise God, you're beyond some other people. <laughs> Amen. 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 Now, borrowing for something's not wrong, but we got to examine why. You know, what are we trying to do? Are we trying to impress others and, and appear beyond where we are? You know, there's, uh, there's another side to prosperity. You know, there's, there's, there's uh, people can appear prosperous, but they're struggling every month just to make the payment or just to, just to have the thing. You get to the place after a while, that gets old. And you just don't care about what other people think. I just want to be free, you know, <laughs> not struggling all the time. Am I in the right room this morning? Taking a lot of rabbit trails here. But, um, but what I want you to know, there is a lifting up from God. I don't know if you remember Deuteronomy 28.1. The Bible talks about in Deuteronomy 28.1. How many of you know that's that chapter that talks about, you know, the redeemed from the curse of the law? And, and uh, well, it talks about what the curse is and what the blessing is. But it starts out in that 28th chapter there in verse number 1. I like it. This is a good verse. It shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe do all His commandments, which I have commanded this day. The Lord thy God will set thee on high. Yes. Say, set thee on high. Yes. Above all nations of the earth. Yes. God can exalt you and I to be way above other people. Now, uh, maybe, Matt, could you go back in my, and get my phone again? I forgot it again. I did that on Wednesday night. I need that. Um, the, the Lord can set you on high, and uh, you might read that and say, well, what does it mean to be set on high? Is that something that 
is wrong? Well, not if the Lord's the one doing it. I'll tell you what being set on high is. Let me just, it, it, it's many different areas. It could be God using you more. Yeah. It could be you having greater revelation of Him. Right. It could be walking in a higher place right. of freedom and victory that you've ever had, than you've ever had before. It could be a higher place where you're at financially. Right. It could be free from something that used to bind you like sickness or disease. Right. But, but the, the, the way the Lord said it to me this morning, in fact, He said it to me on the way in to, to, the, off, I mean, to the church. He said to me, He said, being set on high is walking in a place that you used to look at and say, That's him, that seems almost impossible that I could ever be there. Yeah. Anybody got any areas like that in your life? Yeah. Well, sure, we all do. Yeah. I'm talking about in the natural. It just seems like there's no way. And then you trust God, you walk with Him, you, you stay low to the truth, you honor Him, put Him first, acknowledge Him in all your ways, He directs your paths, and you turn around in a few years, and here you are walking in the place that just a few years before you could see no way. Whether it be how He's using you and the anointing, whether it be how free you are in your mind, you're not living in worry and torment anymore. Uh, whether it be uh, your family is all united and walking in love and Christmas is the best time of year rather than the worst time of year. You ever, you ever been in a place where it seemed like there's no way this family's ever getting together? Oh, there's a way. There's a way. It's called the love of God. Walking in love towards one another. And He takes your family and puts you in a higher, that family in a higher place than you ever walked in before. Getting along, loving each other, blessing each other. Am I in the right room this morning? Praise God. So there's a lot of difference being set, being set on high. It can be used, being used more of God, greater anointing, walking with God on a new level of revelation, faith, victory, having maybe a greater voice into the body of Christ, more influence. It could be a higher position at work. You know what I'm talking about, a higher position at work? Now, there's, there, now you're leading rather than following. Now you're running the company. You're, 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 you, you know what I'm talking about? That could be part of set on high. So, you know, different ones of us have different areas that, that uh, God wants to do this because of our different callings, not because he wants, he, He's showing favorites or anything, but because we have different callings. Uh, but, but like for a minister, it could be having a greater voice into the body of Christ, uh, uh, more influence, uh, reaching more people, you know. Uh, it could be uh, greater blessings. You can look at, at where others live and think there just seems to be no way, but there is a way. That's a high place. You can look at it and see that's a high place. How do I get there? I'll tell you how to get there. Go down. <laughs> you mean go to more poverty? I didn't say that. I said go closer to the truth, more humility, because he exalts the humble. Before honor is humility. Anybody still here? You might say, oh, this is all great and good, but let's get practical. We will in a few minutes. It could include more prosperity. But in, it actually means living in a place what, when you see, where you see others live. I'm not just talking about financially. I'm talking about maybe you, you look at someone and you see how, they're, how they walk with God, how they know God, how they hear His voice, how, how, how they've developed a sensitivity to what He's saying to them, and they walk in it, and it, it works. Yeah. Amen. And you're like, that's a place I'm not walking in. That's a higher place than I am. But it's available. So I'm not just talking about financial prosperity when I say it means a, 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 a place that when you see others living in that way or in that place, it looks unattainable to you. Anybody ever seen? I've had people tell me about me, and I've thought it about other people where some other people walk. It just seemed impossible. to. I, I mean, how do I get to know God like that? How do I walk with Him? How do I hear His voice? How, am, how can I be that accurate? But there is a way, because God, you need to always know this, God is no respecter of persons. He, he will not do for one what He will not do for others. He will not do for one person what He will not do for others. Does that make sense? In other words, He's no respecter of persons. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen. <clears throat> now go to Proverbs 16, 18. You can see in these verses that there is a lifting up. Isn't that what it said in Job? Say to the, 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 uh, the one who's struggling in some area, there is a lifting up. Where you are right now, there's a lifting up. Who does it come to? The humble. Proverbs 16. Well, no, I'm Psalms. That's why I'm not seeing it. I'm having a good day today. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 16, verse number 18. It says, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So you see these verses saying, Before this, there's always this. <laughs> Is that right? You have to know that there's a place for you at the top. At the top of what? Whatever. Where the general public is walking, where the general, even you could say the body of Christ. There's a place for you at the top. Whether it be, you know, in, in how you how well your family is doing, just the unity and the, amen. 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 I was talking to my family on the phone. I was talking to some of them Wednesday night, if you were here Wednesday night, about a conversation I had on the phone the night my dad went to heaven. We talked, I don't know, an hour, an hour and a half on the, I was, they were all there, but I was on the phone, the speakerphone. And we talked about, and I told my family, I said, you know, there's been a time or two my, that dad said to me that he was, you know, feeling bad about some of the things that happened when we were children and you know, and, and uh, kind of repenting, and you know, that's, that's fine, but, but I said to him, and I said, Dad, I said, you know, I've been out in the ministry for all these years, and I said, what you gave us far surpasses what so many people have, as far as a home life, and, and uh, you were there, and you know, the, just the, the unity, and I said, look at all your children, how they turned out. That speaks something about the way you raised us. You know, Amen. and um, that 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 is very unusual, even in the body of Christ. Yeah. Christmas time for us is the most hilarious time. <laughs> just, <laughs> just fun and food and fellowship and picking on each other. <laughs> But a lot of families, there's at least one or two or half of the family, they won't even show up because they're mad, you know. <clears throat> you know what I'm talking about? Well, that's available to anyone. Why don't families have that? Well, there's some problems. Not able to repent to one another because of pride. Not able to receive one another because of pride. Oh, I'm, I'm, t I'm preaching pretty good this morning. But there's a place for us at the top. Now, according to Deuteronomy 28.1, it's a place of complete obedience. It'll come to pass if you hearken, if you listen to the Lord your God. Keep His commandments and His statutes. <laughs> well, not as much shouting on that. But in other words, it, it's a place of hearing what God says and saying, yes, Lord. Yes. We ended on Wednesday night with the Syrophoenician woman. You remember in Matthew 15, she brought her daughter or, or, or came to Jesus on behalf of her daughter and said, come, my daughter is grievously vexed and tormented with the devil. Remember, Jesus just ignored her. Now, she's not a, she's not a Jew. She doesn't have a covenant with God. She is uh, living very sensuously, very 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 loosely that culture there's a lot of writings on that culture and uh you know probably worshiping these idol gods and and their cer worship ceremonies were very perverted it was it was beyond what we can even imagine today and uh but anyway and and this daughter gets this influence this demonic influence starting to oppress her and she she must have lost her mind very tormented very harassed and this lady came to jesus must have heard about the miracles he was doing and wanted Jesus to minister to his daughter or her daughter and and he said or he said nothing at first and then eventually she got sincere and said Lord help me 
And Jesus says, not me to take the children's bread and give it to dogs. You remember that? Now, that would be in most, most people's hearing today. If the preacher said, no, it's not me to give what belongs to the children of God to dogs like you. Those are fighting words to a lot of people. And they get huffy. They get irritated, you know, and they get, they get all offended and hurt and say a few words and stomp off. You proud Christians, you whatever, you know, think you're better than us. And those are fighting words. And they leave mad without without their miracle amen. Amen. amen amen I know there are wrongs that have been done to people things have happened sometimes things weren't right but two right, wrongs don't make a right because somebody else did you wrong doesn't mean you have to do wrong stomp out of the will of God stomp out of the plan of God and stomp out of the blessings of God get out there on offended territory where no man's land is where you're just on your own without his help you might make it a while but after a while you just it gets harder and harder and harder and harder amen tell me i'm preaching all right but when jesus said it's not me to take children's bread and give it to dogs the bible said that that woman said something that it's just 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 powerful to me truth lord what is that? That's humility. She looked, Jesus held a mirror up to her lifestyle and, and said, that's how you're living. And she said, uh, it's ugly. It's so true. It's, 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 it's the way we live. It's the way we live. In other words, Jesus is saying that's the reason, that, that's what opened the door to this demon. It's not enough to just say, help me, Jesus, help me. There's sometimes truth that has to be presented and humility to look at it. That's our way of escape. Go over with me to uh, 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 Matthew, actually. Matthew chapter number 13 is really what we're talking about. This is pastoral preaching. There is the evangelist, there is the healing line, there is the healing gifts of the Spirit, there are uh, all these things, and, and we need to have them because people are all different levels, people are all different places. <clears throat> but if you want to really live free, live healed, live blessed, live, and not just need bailouts in healing lines and bailouts from this, from this, and have somebody pray for you for this, but actually live in a place where you are living in a high place, then there has, to, there has to be more to it than just a prayer line. Matthew 13, 15 says, This people's heart is wax gross. That means thick, you know. Wax means become. This people's heart is wax gross or become thick, and that, that means insensitive, like a callus, you know. And their ears are dull of hearing. Dull of hearing. That's a condition of heart, really dull of hearing. In other words, they hear, but they don't really hear. Dull of hearing. Their eyes they've closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and should be what? Converted. That means make adjustments, and I should heal them. Notice again, there's something that comes before the healing or the exaltation. Something comes before. What is it? Being able to hear what we need to hear. See what we need to see. And then make the adjustments. That's what the Syrophoenician woman was able to do. She was able to look at what Jesus put up in front of her. Although it was... There, see, there's one trouble. There's one problem most of us sometimes at one point or another have had with the truth. And that is this. It's, it's sometimes it's not complimentary. But the truth is no respecter of persons. Just like God. God's no respected person. But the truth is no respected person. I have had prayer sessions for people <clears throat> that, that I could not get through on. I said, God, I know, I know, I'm praying, I know, but they're gonna, I know they're gonna die. I know they're gonna die. 
But I'm asking you to, to uh, intervene. I'm asking you. And I was praying. And I could get nowhere before. Yeah. Uh, I mean, nowhere with God. And I kept coming back to, they're going to have to be able to make this adjustment. They're going to have to make this adjustment. And I wept because God would not make an exception. You know what I'm talking about? He doesn't respect them because I love them so much. I'm saying, God, because I love them, make an exception. He will not make an exception of the truth the truth is the truth for you the truth is the truth for me and whether it's complimentary or not or whether the fact that I'm not walking in the light of it is affecting me or not does not mean God says okay we'll just look away from that truth right now and just act like it's not in the Bible and we'll do something for them anyway I've had prayer sessions where I've wept because God would not change where he said no I've been dealing with them about this and this is what they're going to have to this is what they're going to have to do now unless you think I'm just talking about other people I've been there before where I'm going to get this right I'm going to get this right because I know it's affecting me adversely anybody know what I'm talking about but this Syrophoenician woman had the truth up, brought up in front of her like a mirror. She looked in it, and it was ugly. This is, you know, one of the things about conviction, it brings people to reality. And they see the reality. They might have with their friends thought this is fun and this is cool, but they get in the presence of God and see reality, and they, are, they, they weep and they weep, and they say, that, that, that is so, that's me, it's so ugly. You know what I'm talking about? And that's where we have to come to so many times before we can really begin to see the blessings of God and the lifting up of God, getting us out of all the junk that we've been living in. Am I making any sense? And that Sarah Phoenician woman could do that. She could look at that, she could look at that mirror, so to speak, that Jesus held up in front of her and say, It's ugly, but it's me. Truth, Lord. Within moments, her daughter's free. Why? Jesus said, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto you as thy will. She went home, the daughter's free. Somebody said, she was free because of great faith. Yeah, but notice what came before great faith. Great humility. Are we getting this this morning? Now, we have the, because, and, and you know, I say we, it, it could be partly because of just us ministers not making things clear. So don't misunderstand what I'm getting ready to say. But we have the idea, because of what it says in uh, you know, Romans, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Isn't that right? We have the idea, amen, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, and, but that's only partly true. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm, I'm going to share something with you. If faith, if just hearing is all that's needed for faith to come, then let me look at a passage with you in Luke 4. Luke 4, 28. Luke 4, 28. And we'll go down through verse 30. <clears throat> Say, I'm here, Pastor. I'm here. I got ears to hear. Luke 4, 28 through 30. All they in the synagogue, when they heard these things. Now, this is, let's, let's give you the context. Jesus had just stood up in the synagogue and said, The Spirit of the Lord is on me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, heal the broken heart, so forth and so on. And you remember they were offended. And they, if you read Mark's account and Luke's account and everything, they were offended. He said, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears, you know. They were offended. And uh, they uh, knew that they, these words were very gracious and so forth. Verse 20. They said, uh, you know, do something to prove this, basically. Verses 23 through uh, 25, Jesus is answering there, do something to prove this, that the anointing's on you and so forth and so on. And Jesus said, well, and, uh, uh, you know, a prophet's not without honor in his own hometown, you know. <clears throat> then he said, verse number 28, all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. So he said, faith comes by hearing. These people heard. (laughs) 
all they in the synagogue, notice what it doesn't say, all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with faith. <laughs> they were filled with wrath. Now that's an old English, old King James, King James Elizabethan English word for mad. They got hot. They were, they were ticked. They were filled with wrath. Why? They heard, but they weren't filled with faith. Look at verse 29. They, wrote, here, here, they, they didn't just sit there and seethe. In verse 29, they rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him to the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. They were going to throw him off a cliff. Now that's mad. Of course, thank God for verse number 30. He passed through the midst of them and went his way. Praise God. I, they, I don't know what happened there. The Lord, I mean, the anointing must have blinded them or something. I don't know what happened, but <clears throat> Jesus escaped by the power of God. But notice these people heard, and they go so mad they wanted to throw him off a cliff. Anybody seen that in politics nowadays? <laughs> they weren't filled with faith. They're filled with anger. So there's more to receiving from God than just hearing the Word. Notice James 1.21. I'm, I'm going to... Because James 1.21 gives us more information here. James 1.21 tells us that there's more... That there's a certain way... Let's put it this way. That we are to hear and receive the Word. There's a certain way we must hear. James 1.21. Notice, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness, and King James says superfluity of not in this. It means the overflow of wickedness. And receive with meekness the engrafted word, <clears throat> which is able to save your souls. Save our souls. Receive with what? Meekness. With meekness. That is telling us there is a certain way to hear the word. We need to approach God's Word. Brother Hagin used to, uh, I'll, I'll finish that statement by saying this. Brother Hagin used to say in his prayer before the service, Lord, we approach your Word reverently and humbly. Reverently and humbly. In other words, we might see something in this service, or when we're reading it on our own, we might read something in our Bibles that we don't want to receive. Anybody ever been there? Well, without approaching it meekly or humbly or reverently, with honor for it, rather than more honor for our image. When we're reading the Word, you ever read the Word and God's, the Spirit of God has dealt with you? Go, go re repent to somebody or apologize to somebody. Blah, blah, blah. You're reading the next verse. Reading, keep on reading and try to ignore that. <laughs> Few people recognize what I'm talking about. You've been there. Oh, Jesus. Lord, I don't want to do that. I look bad. Oh, my image. My, no, see, they, what, what is required here now? Humility. Humility. To receive what he's saying, somebody said it requires faith. Yeah, and, and without humility, there will be no faith. You will not exercise faith without the humility to hear what you need to hear. Or... Or see what you need to see. Receive with meekness. Say receive with meekness. So the word's got to be heard with a certain kind of heart. Isn't that right? Heart of honor for what God's saying. Uh, humility before it. There's two verses. I won't go to them for time's sake. Psalm 69, 32. You can write them down if you want to write them down. Psalm 69, 32 and Psalm 34, 2. Psalm 69, 32 and Psalm 34, 2. Both of these verses say something like, The humble shall see and be glad. The humble shall hear of this and be glad. Notice who hears and who sees. People can hear and not hear. Because they hear it. Well, well bless God. You know, they hear tithing. They hear uh, honoring God and putting Him first. And, well... 
preachers. They just want our money. It wasn't a preacher's idea. We didn't write. Malachi chapter 3. Bring ye all the tithes into the store. That was in there long before I was born. Long before I was a twinkle in my mom and dad's eye. <laughs> Amen. But see, what makes people do that? Pride. They think they know better. Know better than God. Anybody still happy you came this morning? So humility sees and hears what we need to see. That's why He gives grace to the humble. Because whenever, whenever we, uh, God finds a humble heart, the Bible says His eyes run to and fro through the whole earth. He's looking to show Himself strong on behalf of somebody. Who's He looking for? The humble and contrite spirit. A person who is pliable, who will respond, who will hear, will say, yes, Lord, truth, Lord, ugly or not, I'll do that. I'll make that adjustment. <clears throat> Amen. That's the person who gets the grace. That's the person who gets the help. That's the person, and that help will lift them up to a place they could never have walked on their own. And people see it, and they either get mad or they get glad. And whether they get mad or glad reveals whether they're humble themselves or they're proud themselves. The humble see it and they're glad. The proud see it and are mad. Isn't that what happened in Jesus' hometown? This is good preaching whether you know it or not. That, that they got mad. They, they could not receive what he said. They got mad. And we got record of many. I'm trying to get to some of them. We're running out of time here this morning already. But in the Old Testament, we're going to look through some stories of people that heard truth and didn't want to, didn't want to hear it. And you realize when we say hear it, we're not just talking about it bouncing off of our eardrums. Hear it and receive it and humbly acknowledge it as the truth. That's where real victory comes. That's where real answers come. That's where the lifting up comes. Oh, it puts you in a place that you could never get in yourself. I could never get in myself. And before you know it, people are going, uh, how'd you get there? How'd you get that position? How'd you, how are you, how'd you pay that off? How'd you do this? How'd you, why, why is God using you? Why are they letting you preach on the platform? Why? Amen. Why do you get to sing on the platform? I've been trying to get there for a long, yeah, that's, that's the problem. You've been trying. You haven't been letting him do it. Yeah. Promotion comes from not the north, south, east. It, I mean, uh, south, east, or west. It comes from the Lord. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. <sighs> Praise the Lord. Anybody still glad you came? <clears throat> Humility is the temper of spirit which we, we accept God's dealings with us without disputing or resisting. It does not struggle against God. It responds to the direction given with a tender heart. Look at that. Obedience. Remember Deuteronomy says, if you'll hearken to the voice of the Lord. He's talking about not just hearing it, because we're good at hearing the word. Let's get good at responding and being obedient. He said, if you'll hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and obey, keep his commandments, then I'll lift you up into this high place. Isn't that what we, what we read there? And so, uh, humility is that temper of spirit where we receive God's dealings with us and uh, accept them without disputing or resisting. We don't struggle against Him. Pride bows up against God's dealings with us and gets angry and offended. Like they did in Jesus' hometown. The humble hear, and it might bring tears to their eyes, but they're glad. They might hear and say, Lord, that's so right. But I'm so thankful you showed me that because it was hindering me. And I don't want anything in my life that's hindering me. And so humility hears it and is glad. Pride doesn't. It gets mad. Pride and offense are sisters. And they have a cousin named Anger. Humility, the, the humble here and are glad. Uh, and uh, there's a, you know, humility and reality are sisters. And they have a cousin named Joy. Yeah. 
The humble hear and are glad. The humble have a cousin named Joy. <laughs> You getting it? I'll say it again. Pride and offense are sisters. They have a cousin named anger. Humility and reality are sisters. They have a cousin named joy. <laughs> Amen. Pride gets angry because his dealings reveal pride to be as ugly as it really is. And when God shows us, shows something to us, we look bad. But pride has to protect its good self-image, so it rejects what God reveals. But humility rejoices before the truth and makes the adjustments. Humility wants God to have His way and be pleased. Humility rejoices when God is pleased. Now, how many of you know pride and uh, you know, resisting the dealings of God or, or anger that comes along with pride and resisting the dealings of God is not always loud. Sometimes it's a silent seething. It just simply puts up a wall on the inside or pulls away and keeps a distance. Inside, whenever certain things are said, a person might even learn to keep smiling. But inside, you can feel it sometimes. Whoop. They just didn't receive. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Anybody want to go home or you want to just finish this out here? Thank God for the Word. You and I need to get to the place, like Jeremiah 9.3 says, where we're valiant for the truth. Valiant. For the truth. And you and I won't get anywhere in life until we come to the place that the truth is more important than us, our self image, what people think. Isn't that right? You, you and I will never really know God like we should without getting to that place where the truth is more important than me. You understand what I mean by that? The Bible says in Mark 4 33, God reveals himself to us as we're able to hear it. <clears throat> or He speaks things to us as we're able to hear it. <clears throat> Amen. Mark 4, 33. Many such parables spake unto He unto them as they were able to hear it. John 16 also says some of the same things. He says, I have many things to say, but you can't bear them now. But, you know, the Spirit will come and He'll reveal it to you. So when, when you love the truth rather than a lie, and you love it more than you love your own image, opinion, or reputation... You'll come to know God more and more, and He will increase you more and more. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I'm almost done. Humility will carry through you through the change, the kind of changes that need to be made in order to receive from God in many different areas of life. It takes the ability to brutally be honest with yourself, to really keep moving forward with God. That usually can only happen through being able to hear what you need to hear and see what you need to see. And those who come uh, and receive from God need to realize that their grace may be on the other side of humility. In other words, the help they need needs oftentimes is on the other side of an adjustment. Whatever God's been dealing with them about, they look at it and say, Lord, I have been ignoring that. I've not wanted to look at that. I know my wife keeps bringing it up. You know what I'm talking about? Not that we should be nagging one another, but our spouses help us. You understand? And uh, I've been just not wanting to deal with that. But here I am at a standstill in my walk with you and in this area of my life. I just don't seem to be able to get past this help Lord I need your help and and uh, it's oftentimes on the other side of this kind of humility where things right start really start working does that make any sense <clears throat> we can't pick and choose which things God says to us that we're going to pay attention to <laughs> you ever heard about the old preacher that said eat the whole roll that means Every word of God. Amen. 
healing, these things that we want or desire in our lives, that's not just, they, they come to us through the Word. Remember, He sent His Word and healed them. They come to us through the Word, but not just the healing Word. Proverbs 4, my son, attend to my word, incline thine ear unto my sayings, let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart, their life or medicine, life to those who find them in medicine to all their flesh. He didn't just say, my son, attend to the healing word. He said, my son, attend to my word. Humility is his word. Isn't that right? Walking in love is his word. Living at peace with our brothers is his word. All these things are his word. And there's health in all of them. So we can't pick and choose, say, well, I want the healing word, but I don't want this walking in love and forgiving word. Right. We don't get to pick and choose like that. The way God's got it set up is we've got to humble ourselves before all of it if we want any of it. <laughs> and oh, it's so good. It's so good. I, when you start walking in this, you're just so glad the way God set it up. But pride won't receive correction or rebuke. But correction and rebuke from the Lord comes in the form of truth. You don't understand. We're not talking about sickness and disease, God correcting us. It comes in the form of truth. Of course, ignoring the truth can open the door to sickness or disease, but that God didn't do that. And so, if since it comes through the truth, if we don't receive the truth, we can't receive anything else from the Lord. Because everything comes through the truth. There's a very interesting truth in 1 Corinthians 12 where Paul said he was caught up to the third heaven. He said, I heard these things that is hard to be uttered, you know, not even able to be spoken in my known language. Pray for me in other places, he said, so that I'd have utterance and uh, get these things out that was revealed to me. And he said, lest I be exalted. People totally misunderstand this. Lest I be exalted through the abundance of the revelation there was given unto me not from God but Satan sent a thorn, the messenger of Satan the thorn in the flesh to buffet me people read that lest I be exalted through the abundance of the revelation they think he's talking about pride they think Paul is dealing with a pride issue and God's sending something to deal with his pride that totally contradicts everything else he wrote even in that book 1st and 2nd Corinthians over and over again he dealt with his pride I could, if I had the time I'd show it to you God didn't have to do that to send that for his, to deal with his pride, lest he be exalted in pride. I'm almost done. The exalting, he said, lest I be exalted through the abundance of revelation. The abundance of revelation enabled him to walk with God in a higher place than he had before that, and Satan wanted to stop that. That's what that exalt. God was exalting him through the revelation. That's what the, that's what the exalt. It was God working in him to enable him to walk in a higher place. He reached more people and was the greatest minister of his day. More anointing, more fruit, took more people to heaven with him than anybody else in his day. Praise God. But Satan was opposing that. What I want you to see is that exalting came through revelation. Can you see that? God, through uh, him dealing with his pride over and over again. I, I, maybe sometime I need to go through it with you. You can see where Paul dealt with his pride. And God, because of that, brought him the revelation that he had when he was caught up to that. Third, and he was out spreading that, that. It's really the in Christ revelation. It's who we are in Christ. He was out spreading that. And sated, <coughs> Satan hated that. And he was opposing Paul personally, but he was opposing him getting that message out to anybody else. Because it takes Christians out of the low place where they're defeated and walking in, and, and they're being overcome by Satan and bound and harassed and tormented and kicked from pillar to post and brings them up to their rightful place. And Satan doesn't want that. So the way he steals that is to steal the revelation. He tries to tries to and he can do that for the proud we see that from the word the scriptures we've been reading can you say amen? amen but see God wants us to be exalted through this revelation in other words walk in a place we've never walked in before to where other people even our own family members they go oh all of us are being kicked around and I was praying 
This is, I don't know who this is for. I was praying last night. Actually, it came to me early in the morning, and then it came to me when I got quiet again last night. The Lord said to me, there's some people that he wants to know this in this congregation. What's happening in your extended family is not your harvest. Meaning, they have chosen not to walk into the light that you've chosen to walk in. For one reason or another. And so, some of the things they're getting, you realize, don't think it belongs to you because you're in the family. It belongs to them because they've not come into the light. You understand? For one reason or another. They can, they can just resist it. And, you know, tongue talkers, you know, whatever. You know what I'm talking about? You're looking at me like you don't have anybody like that in your family. I know you got somebody like that in your family. But see, that's not your harvest. Don't think, well, that must run, you know, that, that uh, mental disorder that runs in my family, that this disorder, that this sickness, that this disease, that, 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 that just oppression, that, 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 that heaviness, that living on medications, that premature death, that, you know, kids leaving the house in rebellion and this and that and all the junk that's out there. That's not your harvest. You have humbled yourself before the Word, and that humility will lift you up out of that. Hallelujah. 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 We love them. We pray for them. If they can hear it, we share a little bit, you know, out of love. We want them to come into it. But see, we, we desire to see them walking in more, but we can't do it for them. It takes just hearing it and letting God, uh, you know, deal with us and walk in it ourselves. But then we've got to say, okay, I'm going to pray the Ephesians prayers for, our fam for, for my family. Praise the Lord. So don't feel, don't feel, you know, I don't know, just hard to put into words. Like, well, it's just not fair. <clears throat> Lord, I have all these things and they don't. Favor's not fair. What's this fair thing? God will do it for anyone. But He can't do it for some. He wants to. You understand what I'm talking about? I, I, it's like what I was talking about earlier whenever I say, Lord, yeah, make an exception here. And uh, he, 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 he is squeaky clean truth. He, he said it. He will not vary from that. And you pray for your family. Love your family. But, but don't think God's going to make an exception and just bless them anyhow just because as much as He wants to. He'll bless them as much as He can. And we ought to bless them as much as we can. We're not against them. We don't, we don't criticize them. We don't beat them down and say, well, you just, you know, no, we, we just keep on seeing what we can get into them. See, seeing what they can hear. Give them a little bit and they start choking. Well, you just back up and start talking about the kids again. You know what I mean by talking about the weather, talking about how, how you know, how you like your new pickup truck? How's it going? You know, because they, you start to give them a little word and they're like, <coughs> yeah, so. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Thank God we have, we have uh, humbled ourselves before the word. And, it, and somebody said, well, that's pride to say that we have humbled ourselves. No, if it's true, it's true. We have said, stand with me to your feet. We have said, yes, Lord, truth, Lord. We have said, and we're continuing to say that. And that's going to be our heart for the rest of our lives. Isn't that right? Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. 